everybody. It's a Tuesday in August. So obviously there's five states voting in primaries today because that makes a ton of sense. You're looking at them, Arizona, Kansas, Michigan, Missouri, and Washington. Some pretty big stuff on the ballots too. The most watched is perhaps the GOP governor's primary in Arizona. There you have Carrie Lake on the left, former news anchor endorsed by former President Donald Trump, taking on Karen Taylor Robeson, backed by former Vice President Mike Pence. Here's a live look at the Carrie Lake headquarters tonight. Votes out in Arizona are still being counted, but the party's on. The polls closed out there at about 10 o'clock Eastern. We're expecting to have results roll in throughout the evening. Scott Tranter joins us now from the Decision Desk headquarters. He's the guy who helps us make these close calls on these races. Scott, so what's the latest on that race in Arizona? Let's start there. So actually, the polls actually just closed at 11 o'clock. They had a little bit of a mix up, and so votes have been coming in the last nine minutes. We're looking at probably seeing a big um, release of votes here in the next 30 minutes. But I would think this one's going to be over 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's going to take a while if anyone remembers how long it took Arizona to count back in 2020. Scott, do you have a favorite in that race that you think is going to pull ahead? You know what? Given where the polling is and how the campaigning did the last month, I think it's going to be pretty close. Um, I would give a slight edge to Carrie Lake, but we'll see how this one turns out. All right, let's move across the country to Missouri. Senate race between two Eric's. Both were presumably endorsed in an all capitals message from former President Trump. Uh, Eric Schmidt has been declared the winner of the Republican nomination. So how does he differ from the other Eric? Well, he differs in the sense that he isn't a former disgrace governor of Missouri, so he didn't have any of those problems. Um, I think the bigger story there is the fact that he was able to win by so much. I mean, Eric Greitens in polling um, looked to be a pretty close first, maybe second there, and it looks like he's going to come in third in that state. So that's a pretty interesting development, and it really makes the GOP happy because they were worried if Eric Greitens won, Missouri could be contestable this fall. So this is a, this is a good win for the GOP and potentially that a win for Donald Trump. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That race against Democrat uh, Trudy Valentine, uh, part of the Bush family, a lot of money behind that race, you'd think. Uh, who do you like in that? Do you think that now it's, it's a lock that Missouri will go red? So the decision desk has a model, and now that we have Eric Schmidt in there, I think we're going to have him at a between an 85 and 95 percent chance of winning this fall. So that's, that's pretty good. Right, Those that's are good. really insightful. You stick yeah. a number right on it on live television. I love it, man. All right, let's go to Kansas. Now, this, I wanted to lead with this tonight, because if you just look at this stuff on paper, this is the biggest deal. Kansas voted yes. against a constitutional ban on abortion, the first state to vote on this since Roe v. Wade was repealed. I thought this result was a little surprising. Did you find it surprising? And what does this tell us about what we can expect in November? So a couple of things. It was not necessarily outcome surprising, but the vote margin was surprising to us. Yeah, votes are still being counted, but it looks like we're going to be at 80, 90 percent of the vote, total vote that happened in a presidential. And it looks like more people are going to vote in this election than did in the 2008 pres presidential. So, you know, this one's interesting. The no one, everyone's going to read into that. But I think the margin there is says a whole lot more. And especially the fir first vote coming off of the Roe v. Wade decision, um, there's going to be a few more this fall. I think that's a that's a good win for progressives and the pro-choice movement, especially for fundraising down the, down, down the stretch. All right, Scott, there are three GOP candidates on the ballot tonight who all voted to impeach President Trump, Peter Meyer, Jamie Herrera Butler, and Dan Newhouse. Uh, you think this will be a referendum of that part of the Republican Party tonight? So it's interesting. Let's talk about the Peter Mayer one. That one, at the, before I went on camera, that one was within 90 votes. Um, that one looks like it's going to take a little while to call. Um, you know, the other two are a little bit different. Washington hasn't closed yet, um, but Peter Meyer there might pull it off. And if he pulls it off, if you're Liz Cheney in Wyoming, you might also think you have a chance. All right, bottom line, brass tax, come November. Are these elections really about the economy, the price of eggs, milk, and gas? Will Democrats have an impact in these races tonight with the people that they've pushed for? Because we've heard all week long about how they're, they're stumping for maybe the more fringe Republican candidates so they have a better chance in November. Yeah, candidates matter, but issues matter more. If we're still looking at 8 9% inflation, and if unemployment actually you know, responds to inflation, right now unemployment's good, but if it goes where people are thinking it's going to go, that's where everyone's going to be thinking about this fall. Um, and you know, it looks like the Republicans are going to capitalize it in the House. We will see what happens in Ohio, Pennsylvania, um, Florida, Arizona, and the Senate. The Senate's much closer, and it's going to hinge on some of these issues a few months from now. Or maybe on China. Scott, if you've got an extra minute, our producers like you an awful lot. I'd like to ask you one more thing, if you don't mind. Sure. What surprised you the most tonight? 
Uh, that total turnout in Kansas. Now, everyone thinks Kansas is a is a red state, and it's actually bluer than people think it is um, historically. But the amount of people who turned out in an off year primary election is just astounding. And so, when we get the voter file back on that in a couple of months, looking at seeing what kind of new voters came out for this, that that is, that'll be interesting and energizing, and tell us a whole lot about what other what other states might do based on the abortion issue. Scott Tranter, the dude on the decision desk. Great job tonight. Thank you for stopping by News Nation tonight. Well, in Lansing, Michigan, local Republican officials were forced to cancel an election night watch party after they received death threats. According to police, a person verbally assaulted a staff member, then said he was planning on, quote, shooting up the building and burning it down. The party is planning another event coming up on Wednesday, but with some extra added security. 